Welcome to this tutorial on Topic 5, Lesson 4, Factoring Special Trinomials. The learning goals for these tutorials are factoring polynomials that are differences of squares and perfect squares. This video is part one of two videos for this tutorial and we are going to be looking at differences of squares in this tutorial. To start us off, we're going to look at a little bit of an investigation. There's three parts to the investigation, and in the first part, we're going to model this polynomial with algebra tiles and record its dimensions as a product of binomials, and then have a look at what we notice about those dimensions. So for our polynomial, we have x squared minus 9. To model that with algebra tiles, you can do them with the actual algebra tiles, or we can sketch them as well. The polynomial makes up the area of the model. We always want to start with our x squared tile in the middle, and then we have nine negative little ones tiles. So we need to put them in this area here because anything alongside the x squared tile has to be an x tile, can't be a ones tile. So we have nine little ones, and we're going to see if we can fill them in as a square or rectangle. So I'm going to go three across and three down, and I'll notice that I have now made a square out of my nine negative ones tiles. Positive tiles we typically shade in, actually. So I will shade in my x squared tile to indicate that it is positive, but my ones tiles are going to stay white to indicate that they are negative. So here I have my model of x squared minus 9, but it's not a complete polynomial model because it's not a complete square or rectangle. We have some empty gaps here. So we need to fill in those gaps with x tiles to complete the polynomial. But the x tiles that we add cannot actually change the equation. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to draw in the x tiles that I need. So you're going to have three down the left side and three across the right side. And then we're going to have to decide if they're shaded or not. If we left the model as it is, we would have x squared minus 6x minus 9. But we can't have that in our model. So if we add an equal amount of positive x's, as we add of negative x's, then we'll have three zero pairs of x's, right? A positive and a negative of the same tile is equal to zero. So this model now still represents x squared minus 9 because you have plus 3x and minus 3x, which would equal zero x's. Now that we have finished our area model, we can go ahead and fill in the dimensions. So we're going to have an x tile and three ones tiles along the top and an x tile and three one tiles along the side. And then we have to decide if they're positive or negative. Well, we have a positive x squared, so we're going to have a positive x times a positive x to get positive x squared. Remember, a negative times a positive equals negative. So we have a positive x squared on the left side and three negative ones on the top, which would equal three negative x's. But over here, we have positive x times three negatives, but it has to equal positives. So we have to go back and we're going to shade in those three ones on the left so that we have positive times positive equals positive. And then that also works for the nine negative ones inside there because we have a negative ones times positive ones, which will give us negative ones. So if we write our dimensions as a product of binomials, our top binomial would be x minus 3, and our left side binomial would be x plus 3. In part two of the investigation, we want to model x squared plus 6x plus 9 as a polynomial with algebra tiles, and then we'll look at its dimensions. So I'm just going to draw the model here. So in my model, you can see I have an x squared, I have 6x tiles, and I have 9 
positive 1 tiles. They're all positive, so they're all shaded in. Now I can go ahead and fill in my dimensions. So we're going to have an X and three ones, and an X and three ones. And I'm going to shade them in because they are also positives, because you're always going to have a positive times a positive equaling a positive anywhere in that polynomial. So if we look at our dimensions of this polynomial, we have x plus 3 as the top and x plus 3 as the side. And they're actually the same thing. So when you have a number times by itself, we usually would write that as the number squared. So our dimensions for this polynomial is x plus 3 squared. In part three of the investigation, we're going to take a slightly different approach. Instead of starting with the polynomial, we're going to start with the product of the two binomials. So we're going to expand each one and simplify and see what we can see about the answers. For the first part here, part A, we have x plus y times x minus y. So if we want to expand out these brackets, we need to FOIL them. So first times first, outside times outside, inside times inside, and last times last. So that's just a way to help you remember to multiply everything inside the first set of brackets by everything inside the second set of brackets. x times x is x squared. x times negative y is negative xy. y times x is positive xy. And y times negative y will be negative y squared. There's two like terms here that we can combine. So if we look, if we combine those, we're going to have x squared. Negative xy plus xy is actually equal to zero xy's. So they will cancel out like a zero pair would. And then we're left with minus y squared. So we have x squared minus y squared. If we look at these two terms, we have a perfect square in the first term. And we have a perfect square in the second term, and there's subtraction in between. Back to our original dimensions, or our binomials, we had the x plus y times the x minus y. So there's a pattern there that we're going to look at in the next slide. Let's do part b of the investigation before we get there. We have x plus 5 squared. Anything squared is multiplied by itself. So we're going to write out that multiplication x plus 5 times x plus 5. Now we can use the same multiplication process as we did in part A. x times x is x squared. x times 5 is plus 5x. 5 times x is another plus 5x. And 5 times 5 is plus 25. If we write our answer, we can. there's a few like terms that we can gather here. And we get x squared still. 5x plus 5x is 10x, so plus 10x, and then plus 25. And this is going to be a special pattern be, um, for factoring. If we can recognize a pattern here, then we can make factoring a trinomial like this easier because we can just get a factor squared as our answer. So what we've been looking at in the investigation is that some polynomials are the result of special products. So when you're factoring those special polynomials, we can use a pattern that formed the products to help us factor them. The first special type of polynomial that we're going to look at is called a difference of squares. And a difference of squares has to have the following characteristics. So the expression has to be a binomial. The first term in the binomial has to be a perfect square, and we would normally call that a squared, just to represent the first term. The second or last term in the binomial also has to be a perfect square, so we just identify that with b squared. And finally, the operation between the two terms has to be subtraction. Thus, in the name, when we call it a difference of squares, difference means subtraction, and we're subtracting two perfect squares. 
So here we have kind of the general form of a difference of squares polynomial. We have a squared, perfect square in the first term, subtracting b squared, the perfect square in the second term. When we see that pattern, we can write our factored answer as whatever the square root of the first term is plus the square root of the second term as one factor, and the other factor is the square root of the first term minus the square root of the second term, and that is our second factor. And so if you recognize that pattern, you can just sub in the answers into the factored um, form. And this is a good point just to remind you that factoring and multiplying are opposite operations. So if you're going from a polynomial to the factored form, that's factoring, but going from the factors back to the polynomial is multiplying. All right, let's have a look at some examples of factoring differences of squares. In part A, we see we have x squared minus 25. x squared is a perfect square, and 25 is a perfect square, because if you take the square root of both of them, you get a perfect number. The square root of x squared is just equal to x, and the square root of 25 is equal to 5. So we go ahead and we fill in our two factors with those numbers, we get the square root of x squared goes first, so we put an x first in both factors, and then we have a plus and a minus. It doesn't matter which order you put them in. And then the square root of 25 goes second in each factor. So our two factors are x plus 5 and x minus 5. In our next example, we have x squared minus 64. Well, the square root of x squared is x, the square root of 64 is 8. It is a binomial, and both term, the terms are being subtracted. So it is a difference of squares. In our first factor, we're going to have x plus 8, and in our second factor, x minus 8. Again, it doesn't matter the order of the factors. You can have x minus 8 first and x plus 8 second. That's okay. In example C, we have x squared minus 9. The square root of x squared is x, and the square root of 9 is 3. They are being subtracted, so now we can write our answer as x plus 3 times x minus 3. You can also check your answers of your factoring by multiplying out their two factors and making sure you get back to your original polynomial. In part D up here, we see m squared plus 16. m squared is a perfect square, and 16 is a perfect square, but we have addition. So this is not an example of a difference of squares. So we can't factor that using that pattern. In example E, we have minus 16 C squared plus 25 D. We also see a plus in the middle of this one, but we can rewrite this polynomial as 25 D squared minus 16 C squared, and then it is a difference of squares. The square root of 25 is 5. The square root of d squared is d. The square root of 16 is 4. And the square root of c squared is c. So we're going to write our answer by taking the square roots of all the first terms, so 5 and d, put them together at the, first of the, at the beginning of the first factor. And then we can write plus, and then the square roots of the second factor. That makes, or the second term, that makes up our first factor. 5d plus 4c. Our second factor is going to be 5d minus 4c. Our last example, part f, is 7g cubed h squared minus 28g to the power 5. There's no perfect squares in all of the terms here, but first we can factor out a greatest common factor of 7g cubed. So you divide 7g cubed out of each term, and you write it out front, and then you're left with h squared minus 4g squared, which is, in the brackets, is a perfect difference of squares. So we can go ahead and write our answer. 7g cubed is a factor. We took it out as a greatest common factor at the start. And then we have h plus 2g as a factor and h minus 2g as a factor.